So good morning, good afternoon, good evening <laughs> to everyone. Um, thank you for coming today. Uh, if you haven't refreshed it, I did make some changes to the agenda within the last like 20 minutes um, to add some links uh, to related bugs as well as uh, some actual new features and bug fixes from the last couple of releases. Um, I don't know if we want to go around the room quickly. I think everybody here was at the last meeting, so we know who everybody is. Um, we talked uh, last meeting, and I'm going to pull up my notes from that. I added them to the wiki um, around some priorities that uh, people in this group have. Um, we talked a bit about uh, tools for managing e-resources, ACK patron requests through the OPAC. Uh, Beth did a presentation on course reserves for us and the bugs that Noble has identified, um, which I think was very helpful to see um, what you guys have identified as kind of the top issues for your libraries. Um, we talked about booking and the possibility that uh, the booking module as it stands now may not be what libraries want to use. Um, and the question, I guess the, the much bigger question of, do we continue to devote resources to um, further developing the booking module or uh, call it and assume that people are going to use a third party uh, platform that is specifically designed around booking, which is what it sounds like quite a few libraries are currently doing. Um, we also talked about serials, especially the lack of quick receive. Um, uh, I had a note about patron loading and the fact that they should be tagged with patron imports. Um, I could not remember if we talked, like I couldn't, I couldn't remember if we said more about that because that was all that was in my notes. Um, and then I had a note about end of semester and the possibility to have an action trigger that's tied into the hard due date. Um, does anybody remember anything from the last meeting that I didn't capture in my notes that they wanted to flag? Okay. <laughs> um, so I, I actually want to jump down to the related bugs on the agenda, and I'll just share the agenda here. And I'll find the share button in Zoom. Um, so I went through this morning and tried to think of all of the kind of features or modules in Evergreen that are I'd say more specific to academic libraries. I think some of the public libraries use them as well, um, but they're the ones that are kind of the primary ones that are academic. Um, so I pulled together lists either from the uh, tags on Launchpad or in a few cases just from searches because um, we don't have tags for hard due dates um, hourly loans or the link checker. Um, does anybody, can anybody think of something that I missed? Um, Cause this is the related bug section down at the bottom here. Like, is there some acquisition or sorry, acquisitions, academic feature that should be on that list that's not there? I mean, the thing that I always struggle with and some of the other SICA sites have mentioned is just e-resources and kind of the lack of any really functionality around that. Um, but it's like such a massive thing that would need to be built. I think it, you know. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that we have any, like I don't even know if there's a wish list bug for something. Yeah, I mean, I think it's something that some people would need to get together and figure out what is needed or or what people need. Like I don't know, maybe it's just me and a couple other places I don't know but um it's something that someone would have to think put thought into what exactly needs to be built 
is that something that others on the call uh, have a need for at their organizations or have heard of a need for? Maybe not. So like for us, I think the, the couple things that come up is just e-resources management, which is like a piece that you can use Coral. Um, so maybe that's not totally required. Um, but the other part that I know some libraries struggle with is the loading of MARC records, um, especially because we're in a consortial environment. I think that creates a new challenge. But just if you have records from Canopy or Overdrive or some vendor, uh, loading them in bulk can be a bit of a challenge. And then when you have a subscription, like we have um, ebook collection, ProQuest, I think ebook collection. And so that kind of once a year, a couple of titles get deleted and added to that. And it becomes this maintenance burden of that. And usually they put the like delete code in the leader to say, this is a delete record and, and things like that. So mm -hmm. is there a way to manage those a bit more easily? Um, be, my approach has been to use the discovery layer. Instead, we use EBSCO discovery service and that kind of works, but they don't like EBSCO doesn't play nice with ProQuest and there's other vendors that don't work well with EDS. And so it'd be nice to be able to load records in the catalog and then they get loaded into EDS as neutral catalog records. Um, so that's a whole thing that, that I, I, I've struggled with. I know Gwenda at Camosun has struggled with, um, but I don't know about anyone else. Is that something where maybe it's the mark batch import export functionality that needs to be smarter? Well, so part of, yeah, because yeah, yeah, maybe because part of it is for us anyway, is like, I think if you're just a standalone evergreen instance, then you don't need to worry. You can just delete records and you can write scripts and whatever. But for us, it's like, it's so for overdrive we have overdrive records do those get merged with the other sicka overdrive records i don't know and then we have to add that dollar nine with our library code so that it, yeah. the scoping of the record happens and so the batch kind of doesn't do that and um yeah because it's like an extra step to do ahead in mark edit or to go through and do after in the catalog with the subfield nine for the scoping yeah and then it'd be I nice if you could just define like, a, I guess you could use a bucket, but define a collection of records that say, these are our ProQuest records. And then you could just delete them all if you wanted, or, you know, oh, we don't subscribe to that anymore, delete or something like that. But I don't know. I don't know if it's coming because I haven't seen uh, any of the development yet, but record buckets are being moved to Angular. Um, so there may be some change. I, I don't know if it's just a direct port to Angular with the existing functionality or if there's going to be some additions coming. I, I think um, what, one of the challenges too is that some of these, like I know the EBSCO eBooks one, I think is like 100,000 titles. And that's, I don't know if the record buckets can handle that. I'm scared to try. <laughs> I am I feel like, yeah, I, I see other people shaking their heads. I feel like that, um, uh, the record bucket might not like that. Yeah. I'm yeah, definitely we... not going to try in production. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Jane said in the chat, I'd be pretty scared. Um, if, I'm sure if you wanted to try it on a test server, James, we could arrange that. But yes, please don't try it on production without any other tests. Previously, I have tried about uh, 200 uh, records in the bucket and it wasn't good. So it was very, very slow. And I don't think it was just the problem of the server or something like that. It was the problem of the bucket. That's good to know. Um, so it sounds like, James, there's a couple different things in what you've said. There's the e-resource management, which I think bleeds into um, the mark import export and needing that to have some additional functionality to better handle e-records. Yeah, and for me, like, because this is not just a bug, right? It's and yeah. so like, I've always had this problem. I've been around Evergreen for a long time and I've never understood how do we collaborate on, like, we want to build a feature. How do we scope it out and discuss it? Like, it tends to just be, well, whoever's putting in the money can decide. Uh, and I don't know if that's the best, but I guess it's how the world works. 
But I think the at least a starting point would be to um, figure out kind of what changes to the mark import export or what additional functionality would be needed um, and put in a wish list bug so that we can get other people looking at it. Because I assume that something like that um, has the potential to be useful to public libraries as well, because they'll be uh, loading e-records um, for a bunch of different things, probably. Yeah, even though even just a feature to just because when we load our overdrive records, it's only a few records, but even just to automatically add the mark field we need uh, would be nice. I don't know if it does that. Maybe it does it already. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I think it can remove. I think it can remove, it can add and remove fields when it merges, but I don't think there's anything to have it add and remove values unless somebody else knows that it can and I'm just not remembering. I'm just... James, what, do you, what tool do you use to upload the records into Evergreen? We download, well, just the Evergreen, the built-in. We don't, I mean, we could load them into, I guess we could load them into Mark at it first and edit them, but it's always the same. We're always adding the same subfield to the 856 field like every time. So it'd be nice to just have a little batch setting or something to just say, add this field, like a template or something. Do you know what I mean? Is that just like in the batch or the Merck batch import up export screen in the UI? That's just what I'm thinking, yeah. Because right now we download the record from OverDrive and they don't, they give us just the URL in the 856, but we need to add a subfield nine so that mm -hmm. the other people in our consortium don't see that record. Um, and every time it's just subfield nine, BVA, BVC, BCC, the exact same thing, every single record. Mm. And it's kind of annoying that someone has to sit here and do that every time. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. All right, lost my uh, mute button for a moment there. Um, and I'm just looking at here all bring this across. Um, so I'm just looking at the holdings import profiles because we've got the record match sets and the merge and overlay profiles. But I don't think there's, because I, I don't know if the merge and overlay profiles would really be where we would need this because you can add and replace specifications but you can't, like, there's nothing to say the value there. Yeah, or I don't know, maybe it's something you could do with the batch edit, which we don't have, I don't think is enabled on Sitka anyway. But... I was gonna say, we have that turned off right now because it isn't granular enough um, to ensure that people aren't accidentally changing um, things they don't intend to. And that's still an extra step after you upload everything, then you have to go batch and edit and everything too. Is this something you could put a wish list bug in for James? Excellent. Um, because yeah, I think that would be very useful for Evergreen to be able to add stuff in as you're loading. Um, and yeah, I think, I think there's potentially more that long-term that we want to look at with the Mark batch import. Um, I know we've put in a few bugs around, um, having it be smarter about subject headings, um, so that you can, uh, merge records together that have the same subject headings, but only end up with one field instead of five fields with identical subject headings. Um, Cause I know that's something that in our consortia we uh, run into the problem with. Um, I will find that bug might be after though. 
Um, because apparently there's 53 mark import related bugs. Um, uh, now, so there was, uh, we want e-resources as a kind of topic. Um, are there any others that are missing from my list? The only other one that I came up with, which doesn't have any bugs either, is the age overdue circuit or age overdue circulations to lost feature, um, where you can set everything to lost at the end of a semester. Does anybody actually use that? Does anybody know what feature I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, okay, let me pull it up. I'm just gonna pull up our training server so I don't accidentally uh, do something. So Evergreen uh, has, and I think for years, if you go to local administration, there's an, this age overdue circulations to lost um, and you can pick your user type and your library, say that you're sure, and then it sets everything that's currently checked out to lost. We're not 100% sure if it actually works. Um, so I was wondering if anybody else was using it. And I think it's maybe something that's, uh, less of interest to post-secondaries and maybe more of interest to K to 12. Um, if you're, you know, wanting people to continue to have things out over semesters. Yeah, I think we generally want people to keep things over semesters and we don't know when they're graduating, so. Yeah, I kind of feel like this was maybe designed for K to 12. I don't know whether Noble uses that or not. I've never heard of it, but I'm not involved that much in circulation, so I'm not sure. <clears throat> yeah, like I said, we aren't even sure if it actually works. <laughs> um. I like that they have the, are you sure? That's a good thing to have on there. Yep. Because, um, yeah, it's one of those things that if you're going to need to reverse it, you're going to need a tech to dive into the database, I think. Um. So, yeah, so that's the only other one that's not on my list because I couldn't find any bugs around it, um, which I don't know if it's because it just works as advertised or because nobody uses it. Um, I feel like it could be either. Um, and then I pulled out, a, I, I went through 312, 313 and the roadmap for 314 um, to see if I could find any um, related features or bugs um, that are fixed or coming out in those versions. Um, and I found two related to course reserves in 312 as well as the Angular link checker interface um, port in 3.12. Um, and then it looks like we have um, potentially the link tracker for course reserves coming in 3.14. Um, it looks like it was targeted for 3.13, but didn't quite make it in. Um, so just wanted to flag that there's a few new features. Um, if anybody's, uh, on 312 or moving to 312. Um, I couldn't find anything in 313 that was related to any of the course reserves booking um, or any of the other modules. Um, I did find, and I just wanted to 
flag it that it looks like quick receive for cereals has gotten really close but it's just not quite over the finish line and possibly just needs testing and a sign off maybe um i see jane nodding your head yeah that's my understanding is that it just needs testing and a sign off um in theory that's something we could flag for bug squashing week in august and maybe get it done and into 314 um so i will make a, a note to poke Taryn um, as we get closer to bug squashing week and ask her to make sure that that is on a testing server. Um, and I just want to, oh, yeah, sorry, um, we actually just put that on one of our servers today. So I was looking at it earlier, but it wasn't working quite as, as I expected. Um, so we're going to look at that some more and um, possibly have some of our libraries tested out on a training server um, because I don't I don't really use it on a day to day basis, but they do. So um, so we'll, anyway, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. But, uh, I look forward to seeing any updates on the bug once people have had okay. a chance to test it out, because um, I know it's one that we'd really like to see come back and I'm sure others on this call would as well. Yeah, some of our libraries do really miss that. And I think others maybe maybe don't use it, but some of them definitely do. So I um, believe many libraries use this and it's really I think it's very closed. I have tested this uh, this back uh, in the last bug squashing week, I think. And it was really close and I was excited by the yeah. interface. It was fine. Of course, there were some minor problems still. Well, and I'll just, I think I have it over here. Apparently I have a few more windows open than I realize. Is here. I'll just stick it up here so we have it shown as part of the meeting here. This is the quick receive. Um, and yeah, it's got that pull request. Um, and I think, Jane, does it look right that this one from March is the one that's being tested or is to be tested? Perfect. I think that's right. Um, I think it doesn't. I think stuff on main has happened since then, and it needs a rebase for main. But it might. It sounds like Beth, you were able to get it installed for Noble, so maybe it's still compatible with three twelve. But I'll probably be putting in a rebase pretty soon for that, so that we can get it compatible with the very freshest version of Evergreen. Excellent. Um, cause yeah, I know if needed, I can make some time during bug squashing as well, um, to do some testing to help get that over the line, um, depending on, uh, what Noble finds. I mean, maybe you guys will be able to sign off on it based on your testing. Maybe. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the next thing I had was um, a topic for next meeting. Um, and maybe maybe we should actually jump down to the proposed dates for the next meeting. Um, looking at keeping this quarterly, that would put the next meeting October 1st. Um, is that a date that works for people? I know October is a ways in the future. I think it does for me. Does it not work for anybody or anybody know that it won't work as we ask four months in the future? 
Okay, so for October 1st, um, is there any particular topic that people would like to focus on? Um, during the Hackaway, we talked about having um, potentially doing presentations on how booking and or course reserves currently function um, and highlighting some of the pain points for those. Um, I don't know if there's other topics people would like to speak to or have discussion around. The one other one that keeps coming up for us is hourly loans and how they don't quite work as needed in Evergreen. And is there any topic that somebody wants to present on? <laughs> I mean, if there's desire, I'm happy to go through particular topics and put something together ahead. Um, well, I, I could speak about, uh, you got me where you said, does anybody want to present? Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I could definitely contribute something at least uh, to the discussion of course reserves. I'm happy to do that. Um, and or to, you know, if somebody else wants to do it as well, that's fine. But, uh, what version are you guys currently running? Yeah. Sorry, Beth, what version of Evergreen are you guys currently on? Uh, 312. So you've got the yeah. newest course reserve fixes. Uh, we should, yeah. Yep. Um, and I've I've looked at booking a little bit with one of our libraries, but I... I'm certainly far from an expert on that. Not that I'm an expert on anything else either, but um, I've only just sort of looked at it. So um, I'm interested in it, but you know, others may know a lot more about that than I do. Well, maybe what we wanna do is say that we'll focus on course reserves materials for October 1st. Okay. Um, and if it would make it, uh, if it would make sense, Beth, I could put together like a little, this is the basics of how course reserves work. And then you could talk about um, like the major issues that you guys have been running into just sure. to not okay. put it all on well, you to prep, unless you want to do okay. a demo as well, in which case I will <laughs> hand it over to you happily. <laughs> Uh, it's so either way is fine with me. Um, I mean, I can definitely talk about the things that um, we would like to see improved, um, but I do, I pretty much know how it works. <laughs> Not that I'd ever forget things, but yeah, we can talk more about that if you yeah. want. Perfect. Okay. Um, anything else that people are hoping to see in future meetings? I'm hoping if we do like a a topic that'll you know that'll help spur some discussion and thoughts and uh, feedback on different parts of Evergreen. And for the October meeting, bring your friends. <laughs> One question I have is about like digital collections and if anybody is doing any work with. Like look like local materials or um, works published by people at your institutions, and if so, if there are any shortcomings that you're seeing with Evergreen or things you that you wish Evergreen would help with that. So, like things that are cataloged as an e-resource, but are the record is coming locally is that what you're saying jane yeah like things you've scanned or things that 
yeah, I guess, yeah, things that aren't coming from EBSCO or ProQuest, things that are coming from the institution itself. Is that something anybody is doing or has come across? If it's happening in Sitka, um, I am unaware of it. I was just curious. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we are we are just we are just trying to uh, keep some uh, materials for our teachers, what they published and so on. And if we have the book, we we are uh, we uh, make a list and uh, make a link to uh, to um, school websites. Uh, so it's uh, what James uh, said. It seems very in interesting to me, and I'm thinking whether uh, something, uh, some uh, functions from uh, uh, course reserves couldn't be used for this because it seems to me similar. There is possibility, as far as I know, uh, as I know, to create. Um, uh, also links to electronic resources and so on. So maybe um, this kind of uh, this kind of function could be used for for something like that. Mm -hmm. I think uh, publish or uh, promote uh, promote a publication in the catalog or things like that is very good at school. Yeah, I can see the course reserves um, with its uh, e-resource piece being a little easier for staff to use to make lists um, for something like that rather than the um, the my list functionality within mm -hmm. the patron account. <clears throat> yeah. By the way, uh, when we were talking about the uh, uh, course reserve, uh, uh, I uh, I subscribe uh, uh, BC Libraries Cooperative uh, YouTube channel, and there is a playlist about uh, course reserves, uh, some short videos, and it's really very useful. Thank you very much. Please watch, or I guess listen to me explain things as many times as you want, because <laughs> that's my voice on them. <laughs> I I I I put a, a link to playlist on it on the chat. So I that kind of well that does take us to the end of what I had put together. Um, does anybody else have anything they want to highlight? bring up thank you for organizing this meeting well thank you for attending and apologies that i didn't get a reminder out earlier than yesterday um i actually ended up uh setting that on sunday night because i realized that yesterday was our holiday <laughs> um so thank you all for coming. Um, the next meeting will be October 1st. Um, I've tentatively put in January 7th as the one to follow um, because I think the 1st of January is also the Tuesday and I don't think we want to meet on New Year's Day. Um, I think most of us are probably not at work <laughs> on New Year's Day. Um, and then I was assuming that the third meeting um, we would line it up with the conference, assuming they're gonna do interest groups during the Hackfest again. Um, and if you haven't already at the top of the agenda, though I suspect everybody in this group is on it, um, we have the Evergreen Student Success Working Group list. Um, again, share it with your friends. If you have anybody else who's interested in uh, the student success working group um and i think you know over the next 
several months, a few more meetings, um, we should be able to build this group uh, back up and start talking about these again. So thank you all for coming with me Thanks. to uh, bring this group back into being. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to stop the recording.